Welcome to our 10 day group cruise through Northern Europe on the Norwegian Prima. My name is Josh. This is Travel with Josh and Taylor. And today we are going into Amsterdam. We're going to see some windmills. We're going to try some cheese, do a little walk about before we head back to the ship and have some dinner. Let's go and have some fun. <laughs> It is. So this is the second time that we have been to Amsterdam. Our first time was on our river cruise. Uh, we actually finished in Amsterdam. It was really cool. We had an overnight here, but we never really got to go out and explore the city. Uh, we spent most of that time meeting up with one of our friends from our group cruise, which was really, really cool to see somebody from back home here in Amsterdam. And we just kind of hung out. We had some drinks. Um, we did walk through the red light district and then made our way back to the ship. And I think really because that first time after seven days of, you know, really hitting some of the cities really hard on that river cruise, we just didn't want to spend a lot of time walking around the city. It also was kind of dirty. Um, and so this time we decided that we were going to walk about the city a little bit, go out to uh, this kind of bridge location uh, that is supposed to be a highlight here. Um, and even on the walk out, it was still very clear that, that the city's just not overly clean, you know, and I don't, I'm not trying to be a harsh critic here of Amsterdam, but it is just kind of, you know, dirty. There is garbage literally everywhere and no real reason or rhyme or reason to try and clean it up. Um, it seems like people just throw all their stuff out and about. But we walked out to where this bridge was at and then we started making our way back because we did book a tour today, uh, not through Norwegian. This was on a third party. Uh, we booked it through Viator uh, and this was to go to the windmills here uh, and then also try some cheese and see how wooden shoes are made. Welcome to the Zaanse Schans. Can you pronounce that, Zaanse Schans? Zaanse Schans? Zaanse Schans. You're doing quite well. We have the so the first part of the word Zaanse comes from the Zaan, the river behind you, and uh, also from the Zaanstreek, and that's all the little villages combined next to the Zaan. And so the second part of the word, and to make this village, they did not remake these houses, they took all these houses out of the Zaanstreek. So at the Zaanstreek there were new roads being built, train stations, some houses had to be demolished, or were just in the wrong spot. So what they did is they picked up the houses as a whole. Back then the bridge was flat and they will bring them here, build new structures and then put the houses here. So all of these houses are original, but they were only placed here in the 1960s. And so the oldest house dates back to 1623. Welcome in my street. So this is a community garden and this is where we plant our apples, pears and we also have berries um, and every neighborhood used to have a garden like this. We still use it because you never knew when resources would be scarce and you would always have food. And we even have our chickens running around and they, they're like a tiny breed so they lay these tiny eggs but they are our golden eggs. So welcome inside. The first clocks that you're seeing are regional clocks. And so, depending um, on the region, they had different clocks. Because we were farmers, so we had to use the clock also as a hammer. So that's why it's round. But the fishermen, they had a hook, that's the left top. They had a hook, and that was used as a third hand, because of all the fishermen. Uh, these are some special clocks. And having an old pair of clocks isn't that common. Good morning. First of all, the type of wood that we use is poplar or willow. It's fresh and wet, and it's easy to cut. It cuts like cheese, only the taste is slightly different. In the old days, we shoes were made by hand. And we did it uh, with the big knife in those days. We did it for 800 years. And the inside was done with several sizes of spoon screws. 
Bayern was difficult, even uh, for a skilled shoemaker it could take three hours to make one pair of shoes. Well, I don't have the time or skill, and I'm a bit lazy, so instead I use two machines and do it in five minutes. The first machine creates the outside shape. Inside shape. And the heel and toe are done the traditional way, by hand, old fashioned. But more than half of the weight is water. I'll try to show you. This one is a bit dry. Oh, yeah. It's not from me, it's not from me. <laughs> it's not spit, it's water from the tree. So we let it dry slowly. That was really cool. So after the demonstration there of how to make the old wooden clog shoes, which was really cool, we kind of just toured around inside of the gift shop here. And you can buy, as you can see on the walls, all of those clogged shoes are there. You can buy them. They are very heavy though. So be aware that like if you don't have the weight and space in your luggage, uh, you're going to have to, you know, pay extra for that weight. Um, and if that's something that you really want to get, a handmade pair of shoes from here uh, plan accordingly for that but one thing that we always try to get is a ornament from a new place that we have been to and then also just maybe trying to look for something uh, other that's kind of like a knickknack small type of thing to also uh, help represent the trip yeah so down right there i'll just stand over here right there. now the next part of our tour here at the Jean Jean's uh, windmill farm was this cheese type of demonstration. It wasn't like a real a lot to see here. Uh, they did talk a lot about just how the history of the cheese making process here and the family and really just a lot about the cheese. I think maybe more so the highlight here is after this demonstration is going into the main showroom, which is where you can literally try almost every single cheese that they sell here. And then you can also buy it as well to take home. And of course, I was not passing up that offer to eat a bunch of cheese for free. Mm, that's really good. And that's the goat cheese. I don't know why I like goat cheese. What all did you get? The ones that were over there. Those were good. They were really good. Oh, I don't like that. You don't think I can take these back with us? I don't know. I'm just... Maybe I'll just get one. I'm going to eat it on the ship. Keeps without refrigeration for one month. Now, you certainly could have spent at least an hour in here walking around, trying all the different cheeses, making some really difficult decisions on what type of cheese you want to take back with you. But at the end of the day, we only decided to get three different types of cheeses to take with us. And they also included uh, some of the free like cheese sauce that you can eat with your cheese itself. So this was really cool, too. We got to go inside and see this working windmill. And if you heard what she said, it's the only one in the world that does paint, uh, which is really cool. And we got to go and climb all the way to the top here. If you're kind of uh, not able to do that, just know that you won't probably be able to get up. You have to climb the ladder to get to the top here. And it gives you this nice uh, overlook uh, throughout the, the windmill farm. And it was really cool. <laughs> of course, classic fashion for this entire cruise. It's been raining literally every day. And it's been, you know, just heavy rain. It seems like nonstop. And after this uh, last part of the tour, it was time to make our way back to the ship um, and make our way just back into Amsterdam itself. So again, this was a really great tour. I really enjoyed it. It was super educational, uh, very cool. Got to try some cheese, learn a little bit more 
uh, about the culture here. But uh, I think what's most important is to not book this excursion itself through the cruise line, um, especially Norwegian. I think this was, you know, probably triple what it was, what we paid going through Norwegian than what it was to do it uh, kind of on our own with a third party. Uh, and even with that being said, this tour operator does work with the cruise line. So Norwegian does add quite a bit on top of whatever they're charging um, to make some money. So, uh, you know, you can save yourself a lot of money by not going through the cruise lines and doing it through a third party, but just be aware of your time schedule and making sure that whenever your tour ends will be uh, plenty of time to make it back to the ship. So, uh, welcome to Miss Lovers, my name is Terry, I'll be waiting to see me. What is our, any uh, restriction on it? So, once we were back on the ship, we went and had some food at Los Lobos with some friends. This is an additional charge, so make sure that you get a reservation for it uh, if you're interested in having some Mexican food while sailing on the Prima. Uh, it's really great. We had tables like guacamole. It was absolutely fantastic. And really, like, at the end of the day, um, this is probably one of our, you know, more favorable restaurants, I would say, to go to. It's kind of, uh, you know, not so upscale has that more kind of sit-down casual feel. But it was really good and a great time with some uh, great friends. And after that, we wanted to go back outside and take a look at us going through the lock system. So if you don't know, the only way to get into Amsterdam is through the lock system uh, for uh, or from the ocean. And so it's pretty cool how they kind of pull the ship into this super tight space uh, you know, release the water or fill it with water and then you go through. So really cool and a different type of, uh, you know, thing to see. You don't really always see that on an ocean cruise. And then what a really great way to cap off our night here or our day uh, on the ship is with the Price is Right and our friend Chris got selected to go up and be a part of Price is Right. And then not only did he get selected, but he even won, which was really, really cool uh, and awesome for him. And it was just a lot of fun, and we had a really great time. Okay, this is fifty-seven thousand. Yeah! Woo! So all in all, Amsterdam here. Uh, you know, I don't really think that this is probably one of the highlights for me of the cruise. Uh, Amsterdam, I've just never really been a big fan of. You know, we've been here twice now, and certainly something I would be interested in skipping again in the future unless there is uh, maybe tulip season which isn't really in Amsterdam it's going to be outside of Amsterdam anyways um, and uh, you know at all in all you know I think it's just uh, it's one of those ports where we just kind of go out Taylor got a stroop waffle we come back to the ship uh, and then just hang out and enjoy some of the amenities on the ship the next time that we would happen to be in Amsterdam if it does happen again so thanks for watching everybody this is our last port day here on the Prima, we're going to be sailing off, checking out, getting off the ship, and heading into London in the next video. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you all in the next one.